Welcome traders to another exciting journey into the world of algorithmic trading. Today we are delving into a strategy that is a favorite among quantitative traders. While I always use an oscillator to build a mirror version strategy, but in this video we will use linear regression as the star of the strategy. Now why mirror version is a favorite among quantitative traders? It's because mirror version strategies have a high win rate plus they give us a lot of trades so statistically they are significant and if you pair a mirror version strategy with the right instrument then you are almost always will get a robust trading system to simply explain mirror version i plotted here a 30 day moving average with the s p 500 chart and basically what we are looking for in mirror version strategy is when the price deviate away from the mean so in this case our mean is the simple moving average of course this can be measured in a million ways but for simplicity i'm using the simple moving average and you can see whenever the price deviate a lot from the mean average then we pull back to it so same here same here and same on the opposite side so we go down we pull back to the average we go up we pull back to the average we pull down we go back to the average and so on and so forth and this is the same chart with linear regression so basically this linear regression now looking 30 bars back and plotting the mean which is in the middle and two channels which are two standard deviation up and down linear regression is used a lot in the finance and many other industries and basically it shows you the relationship between two or more variable the way we are using it now is the line that best fits a number of points so here is an example we have uh, many points on this uh, chart basically we have two axes and each point represents a value between these two axes and this black line represent the best fit between all these points now of course you can go further look at the slope and the intercept and uh, there are many uh, figures that you can get out of this but this is the simplest way to use linear regression so going back to our chart and let's zoom in so currently this red line it's the best fit in the last 30 closes and the upper channel and the lower channel are two standard deviations away from this best fit line so of course this line will change whenever we have more points so this is the best fit of the last 30 points now today we are fortunate enough to have many sources of education and here i ask ChatGPT to train me on how to use linear regression and it went along and gave me everything and in fact you can expand on each point if you want to learn more and then i ask it to give me a simple a mirror version strategy using linear regression so this is easy language code here we are in multi chart and this is my linear regression plot so this is the best fit in the last 50 bars and the channels are one and a half standard deviation up and down now for example here i will show you what was the plot looks like on this green bar so if i plug the date so you can see on this bar this is how the channel looked like now the channel plots forward but i just want to show you that the plots will change of course with every new point now sometimes it doesn't because the best fit line between these points might not have changed and sometimes it changed a little bit and sometimes it changed a lot and the idea behind using linear regression as a mirror version strategy is because of these channels so basically when the price touches the lower channel then we are looking to go long for the mean and when the price touches the upper channel we are looking to go short to get back to the mean basically it's the same way that we treat all mere reversion strategy we are looking for some kind of pullback to go long or some kind of overshoot to go short now let's apply the chat gpt strategy and let's see how it turns out so this is the strategy applied and the returns are <laughs> not good this is without commission and slippage so basically both sides are losing 
but the strategy comes with input so let's optimize it and see the result so here are the inputs we have the look back length and the standard deviation multiplier profit target and stop loss so i put these values and we have 16,000 combinations and looking at the result if we filter for all strategies that has a return to drawdown ratio more than one so out of 16,000 possibilities we have 3,300 strategies making more money than their maximum drawdown and the best one is making 117 with 700 trades on average 150 dollars per trade and uh, we can see the look back is five the standard deviation multiplier is 0.2 5,000 profit target and 2,000 stop loss and this is how the strategy looks like now as you can see from the test the strategy is not that good i didn't even do robustness but I just wanted to show you that you can get ideas from ChatGPT nowadays. So even though the strategy is simple, but it gives you a framework to start with. And if you add filters or if you change uh, the look back period and so on, you will get to a good strategy, especially if you started with pairing the strategy to a mere reversion instrument. Now I mentioned this in the beginning of the video and what that means is not all instruments are suited for mere reversion. I press on this point a lot in all of my videos. You need to pair the strategy style with the instrument characteristics. In this case, the S&P 500 is a mere reverting instrument. That doesn't mean you cannot build breakout or long-term trend following strategies on it, but it's very simple to build uh, short-term mirror version systems on so i built my own strategy using linear regression don't worry about the code usually i post it below each youtube video in the youtube post in the statuaces free community now my strategy uses the same logic that ChatGPT produced but i use a different length for the exit so this is the length for the entry and the length for the exit no stop loss no profit target and this is the multiplier for the standard deviation now removing the stop loss and profit target reduces our combinations and now we have about 6000 combinations so let's test this so out of 5700 strategies we have more than 2700 strategies uh, with return to drawdown ratio more than one and no profit target no stop loss and no filter also so that is very good and if we sort by net profit and now we are above two hundred thousand dollars for the top strategy and more than 40 strategies above 150,000. now if i look at the top strategy here this is the equity curve and we can see number of trades 188 we are making really good average trade on both the long side and the short side but here i want to bring your attention to something really important because we are trading this on the same account we cannot be long and short at the same time so that means if we are long and we get a short signal we will close the long signal and we will go short and of course the opposite is true so this means that we are not getting the exact number of long trades and short trades because they overlap and when they overlap they cancel each other and the right way to test this is to separate the long from the short. So this is what I did. I put the same instrument, which is the S&P 500, same data, but now I separated the long here and the short here. So we have two strategies working on the same time. So the difference will be that when the signals overlap, they will not cancel each other. They will still keep going so on the right side here this is the strategy with long and short in the same logic and we pick the best one which is 188 trades and the strategy is making 229 with 8 to 1 return to drawdown ratio this is the portfolio on the left side here and each strategy is working on its own and i can show you this so this is the correlation based on daily equity and we can see that we are negatively correlated at almost half that means that half of the time while one strategy is making money the other one is losing money and of course that is a huge advantage and we can see this in the number of trades so for example here let's compare the trades 188 here we have 350 
Now, if we look at the performance summary for both, you can see this one is $230,000 almost, and this one is $291,000, but still keeping the same return to drawdown ratio. So we increase our net profit a lot while keeping the drawdown in the same ratio. So that is very good. If we go to the annual period analysis, you can see that since 2006, we had six years losing money in the strategy that has both long and short logic in the same system. While when trading the strategy separately, even though it's the same logic, but trading them separately, you can see we have only one year losing money. Actually, it's two because there's no slippage on commission. So this is also uh, will be a losing year. So two instead of six. But also notice the number of trades. So here it's almost always 20 something and here they are all in the teens. And especially this year we have eight trades here and 18 trades here. And finally we look at the curve and you can see how this curve is doing nothing from uh, almost 2009 till 2018. While this curve is sloping up all the time. And while sloping up all the time, we didn't lose this huge jump since 2019. So you can see here since 2019, it's exactly the same jump. In fact, if anything, we made more money. The key takeaways here is there are a million ways to build a mere reversion strategy. But like I always say this with my students, with my Q&A sessions, in the chat segment of the community, everywhere with everybody I meet, always match the strategy style with the instrument always test long and short separately and if you want to combine them you have to combine them in a separate account or in an account that lets you trade both directions at the same way because most brokers will not let you do this trading long and short at the same time but you can easily do it by two accounts so you trade the short strategy in one account and the long strategy in another account the advantages are big and you cannot neglect that. The other big takeaway is any indicator can be used in any way you like. So don't depend on the defaults or what everybody is showing you. Explore and do a lot of trial and error to find out what other ways you can use this indicator. So for example, I use linear regression in this video as a mirror version instrument, but I also used it in another video to build trend following a strategy, which is totally the opposite of mere revision. In fact, if anything, they complete each other in a portfolio. And if you wanna learn how to do that, watch this video and I will see you.